create here. And for the past year and a half, we haven't been in a very comfortable spot with our merch. And so that's why for 2019, moving forward, we're gonna be working with Champion. We're gonna be doing a couple things kind of like this. We got the black on black embroidered hoodie. Got it on the hood too. That way when you got the hood up, it's all nice and you look good. Probably just fucked my hair up. <laughs> We also got joggers, we've got shirts, we got long sleeves, a bunch of other awesome stuff you guys are gonna like that myself, Zobe, Typo, I've been working on. And we're also gonna be producing our own merch, aside from Champion, our own lines inside of the Optic Store. And uh, make sure you guys don't miss it. Also make sure you guys are around tomorrow when the product drops in Champion stores in LA and New York. And also make sure you guys are around on Saturday when it goes live on the Optic website at noon. Make sure you guys Tweet us all your pictures when you guys receive the product. We do want to see all of you guys repping stuff like this. Yo, let me get a few trophies from my house. They're my trophies. No, they're not. They're the organization's trophies. You know that. I can get you replica stuff. How, many How do much do they cost each? 600. Each? I ain't paying that shit. I know. Nah. All cheap, I want's four. You cheap fuck. I know. I, I want the Vegas one. The, the Vegas one, I don't know how to replicate that. So let me have that one. Okay, how about I give it to Dashi, who's the one that fucking won us the, the, the tournament? I had a 1.2 with a SOG. Okay, it doesn't matter. It's staying with the rest of the trophies. <sighs> yeah, that's a hair out. Oh, yeah. Uh, is this mine? Yeah. So I can uh, wear this after? Yeah, that's it. Oh, let's go. Then I'll wear it. I'll wear the fuck out of it. Going into week two, we still weren't sure if we were gonna have Bruce or not, so we didn't really do any preparations in terms of like scrimming or playing more. Most of that, we knew we were gonna be able to do at the studio for our matches, so we just didn't really worry about it too much. It was uh, it was a weird situation, because again, we just weren't sure. We were kind of on the fence. It was like a 50-50 at that point. We didn't really do any preparation. We kind of just kicked back, relaxed. We, we just spent some time with the team, hung out, which I don't think is too big of a problem, because of how weird the situation was. I mean, obviously people would expect us to, you know, practice and stuff, but at the same time, it's like, this isn't our real team. We don't know if Bruce is even gonna be here. Practicing could have been a waste of time. It could have been not a waste of time, but it's just a weird situation to be placed in. So now we didn't really practice at all. We just kind of chilled out. If you win second, we're so good at every other hill. Really focus second, win that rotation, and the rest of the map is going to be so much easier for us. Straight up. That's right, and Scump said, well, over the weekend, we didn't get a chance to get too many reps in, so coming in this morning, our, our scrims were not quite up to par, but, you know, we're feeling a little bit better since then. He did also add he's feeling a lot more comfortable on the Maddox roll, and that Zuma continues to do exactly what they need him to do, so overall, they are feeling pretty good heading into this match. Boss Brandon, he knows that's an easy pick. That's going to be a song. Flanking an ICR, snaps onto a second, third in front. He's able to spot him, and there's another kill. Planet five. We started the week off beating Red 3-1 in a close match, but we still got the wins. Uh, after that, I guess it kind of like took the pressure off. It could have been a bad thing as well. I don't think it really changed our mindset, like beating them first, but it kind of like, like I said, it just took that like edge off, which can sometimes help you play better. You highlighted has had some tremendous performances so far. He really has stepped up in terms of slaying category. And it's kind of a reminder to everyone, 
Maybe your common where it's like, hey, guys, don't forget, I can still do this if I need to. Oh, man. Up to gaming, look at maybe a full 60 here as the grab slam invested and Karma actually finds two there. Up to, it's a perfect hold. Okay. Gen G spawning out towards fences. You have 10 seconds to touch the hill. And then, of course, you gotta do the hard part. You gotta kill him. And Zuma, he's just been fantastic to watch. A 4v3 turned into a 3v2 in favor of Gen G. Major Maniac swing and a miss. TJ, another double as he now looks for the ace in the round. Can he find it? Major Maniac tagged up one shot, nothing but a sniper and a dream. You, you gotta hit a snipe shot. You, you gotta pray for a pick and scump. He knows he doesn't need a challenge. You can see his foot is not good enough for the kill. And TJ, the round is never over until the Iceman is dead. That is an ace from him. Yeah. I thought we had that, bro. Especially after the first round when TJ fried him, I thought it was over. Oh, good. Nice yeah. try. I'm not even mad about that, bro. This guy's fucking silly. We literally, we should have, realistically, we should have 3 0'd them. Sure. Streaks first map, got 1v3 second map for the 5 3 lead. And for, for that big Bro, streaks. if I literally flanked the hill, instead of like playing for a kill back house, first map we won, dude. Yeah. But like, you made the right play. You ended up getting a kill too, I think. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be another one. Like, dude, dude, that was so fucked, man. I spawned, it was 10 seconds at hold. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really realize how much time was left, but I went to go mid, and there's a drone squad just sitting mid map. Try to kill Mock. Let's get it, bro. Let's get it, bro. Let's get it, bro. Can you pass that in the, the garbage out there? What do you say, yo? He said, Tyler said, Krim, I don't think you should have streaked there. Krim goes, no, Tyler, you shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. I'm like, you want to fight? Swear up right now. I don't know. But Tyler would kick your ass, Krim. What do you think about that? I'm a fucking bowling ball. That's a bomb carrier. Bomb carrier down. They're trying to stay alive in the back. Lightning strike. Guy. No, two in their Slide squad. Gunless, stay two up. in their squad. Two versus three. The streak's coming up huge for LG. It's not over yet. 1v2. Can't do it. And LG, the streak's big in round 11. Um, I feel like we could have ended that week 6-1 and one easily. We went last map against Gen G and LG. Uh, we kind of threw the LG series away. The Gen G series, they just played better in Search and Destroy and Control, which was understandable. It's, those are the two game types that uh, are more chemistry-based, and knowing like having a team dynamic and plan really comes into play in those. So we beat Gen G in both hard points. If we could have just stole two, three, or five, could have beat them easily. And then LG, we went up 2-0, and then, um, again, Control was one of our or weak areas, and they beat us in one of the hard points. So, you know, it is what it is. Could have ended 6-1, and one, but again, still happy with a 4-3 and three ending. I think we, we did as good as we possibly could with our situation. And I think if you do that to any other team, it's probably not going to be a 4-3. and three. So to do that with us, I think it also boosted our confidence, um, knowing that we can do that, you know, without our best player and the most important role. So uh, I think it's pretty impressive what we did and we're able to achieve with the sub. The team that's most prepared will have the best chance whenever things get you know tough in the bracket. They'll have the best chance to pull it out because they just have more reps, more hours. Um, but in terms of confidence, I think it improved our confidence because us four saw what we could do without Bruce, who is considered our best player and probably is our best player in terms of you know killing and just being a nuisance on the map. like getting two pieces all over the place. So I think it helped our confidence because now we can see that we can take these top teams that are like top six teams right now, last map with me on a Maddox full time, like that just shouldn't be happening, you know, for other teams. So to see that, I think it gave us four uh, more confidence. And I think that it's gonna be a problem because once we get Bruce back, we're gonna be like hungry to show people like, 
that were beating us at the league, like now you're, you know, you're fucked. But no, uh, not really that. But, you know, we're just hungry now to, to prove again that we are the best team because we obviously didn't have our full team during the league and people took advantage of that. So I think that it's a good thing in the long run that Bruce wasn't there just because now we're like we're mad like we want to we want to show everyone like that beat us and we're talking trash to us like you're beating us with a sub like come on you know that type of mindset so uh, our confidence will be through the roof going into Fort Worth and trying to go back to back It shoots twice like this. Twenty eighteen, man. Twenty eighteen was an interesting one. I'd have to say for the entire optic organization. Damn, how long has it been since we lived in a house? Moved here just soon. It's almost been like it's almost been a year and a half. A year and a half. Uh, so that's quite a long time and during that time I lived I did have a roommate Aaron uh, but it was my first time sort of like living out on my own um, and it was different I feel like I learned a lot I feel like I might be a true loner but I figure I'm getting a little older and um, and I'm excited for everyone to be back in the same house I'm looking forward to the grind you know fully resuming um, and hopefully more house videos and like the old times, just like the old times, the old fun. That's what we all wish for. Um, some people, you know, we're still waiting for Will to get here. We're still waiting, um, you know, to get everything going fully. But finally, you know, Vision's coming out. We could upload, we could stream, we could do a whole lot of things now. So it should be fun. This year I started streaming on Twitch again and then I wanted to vlog on YouTube and then I realized I don't do shit except for stream on Twitch when I'm streaming. So there wasn't anything to vlog, but now that we're moving back into the house, we'll have some stuff to vlog. So it should be uh, it should be pretty good. I'm definitely gonna continue to uh, make gaming videos and, and stream on Twitch and stuff. But yeah, being able to uh, to collab with everybody and, and be able to make some, some more interesting vlog content. It's gonna be great, bro. It's gonna be dope, I can't wait. I'm trying to get moved, so I've gotta move all my stuff out of my apartment. I gotta move my cats. They're attacking each other. They're anxious, they're ready. And um, trying to get out of my lease and get everything done. I gotta try to figure out how to move a couch through this little ass hallway. There's like a 90 degree corner and I don't know how I'm gonna get all my furniture and stuff here. So I'm a little stressed out. It's the end of February. This comes out tomorrow, right? Okay, so yeah, it's Thursday, it's Wednesday right now. And um, it's a very stressful time, but it's gonna be totally worth it. I'm the last one to um, to finally move in, so I'm ready to uh, to hurry up, get in here, start creating some some videos, some content. We always call it content. Dude. We're just gonna make some fucking videos, bro. Specifically for me, 2018 was about learning a couple of new skills. Towards the end of the year, some Halo tournaments came back into the scene. I started competing. Moving into 2019, I am invited to the Southwest. No, South by Southwest tournament. There is a $100,000 Halo tournament going on. There's only six teams that were invited. You had to place in the top six at the previous tournament, which was held in St. Louis by UGC. It was the UGC Halo 3 Classic. We did, unfortunately, end up finishing the top six to get that invite. So the whole move's been kind of tricky. Can't even lie. There was a little point that uh, there was some team situation things for me, because obviously I'm not representing Opti Gaming with this Halo roster, it's just kind of my own thing. Uh, Opti Gaming supporting from the shadows in a sense, they're helping promote the Halo scene with tweets, when the uh, tournament coverage is going down, and all that fun stuff. But during this whole process of moving, I actually almost got dropped off my team, which was, caught me off guard uh, a little bit, I can't even lie, but I mean, that's the whole thing with esports, sports in general, things are always moving, esports, sports, there ain't no vacation day, especially in esports. There's there's no such thing as vacation in esports. You are doing this thing 24-7-365. You can't miss a beat. And I almost missed that beat, but as soon as I saw what was happening, I made sure to get my stuff in here. I started playing at Hex's studio as the transition was happening. After I got all my stuff in here, I moved everything back into here and finally started gaming. So the move was kind of nerve-wracking for me in a sense but as soon as we got back in here or as soon as i got in here and saw everyone in the house people moving in i was like 
I'm getting that feeling again, that feeling of first moving to the first optic house. Um, I feel like this is gonna be the last time in our lives that we can like do this type of stuff. Like, not to say that it's like <laughs> coming to an end, but it's like, you know, we're getting old. Um, so I'm excited to be back in this kind of situation. Thank you.